गुड इवनिंग फ्रेंड्स टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस आवर कम्युनिकेशन विद आर बॉस विद आर रेजिडेंट्स एंड विद आर पैरामेडिक्स रिमेंबर इन एनी सर्जिकल यूनिट दीज आर थ्री पिविट्स ऑफ any smooth running surgical unit if i have to say the unit runs on the wisdom of boss on the labor of residents on the support of paramedics until all three work in unison we cannot achieve the possible best and believe me the performance of any surgical unit does not only depend on the wisdom of boss does not only depend upon the labor of residents it is a collective effort now it is not the salary it is not the building and infrastructure which makes the difference in the outcome the success of any surgical unit depends lot on the interpersonal relationship which comes out through lot of understanding respect and emotional taking care of each other can somebody uh, comment upon the audio and video quality please to start with i would say a great leader or a great boss is one who develops a great team working in a synchronized effort but the best boss is one who develops a team which continues to work even without him even when the boss is no more functioning even when the boss is not every day there to guide the team follows the same spirit of care compassion and quality to develop that lot depends upon how you carry on along with your team so i am reminded of couple of videos by pep mirazi who has been a psychologist who studied over 20 years the olympic players and how they performed to go to the top so there are three qualities in any person in a surgical unit which can number 1 come to the better outcomes of the unit number 2 please the boss and if we have to enumerate one by one what i am now my initial part of the lecture is how how does the boss look at his associate his junior consultant and his residents what are boss is prospective and then i will tell about the prospective of the younger colleagues how they expect out of the boss let me first say what the boss expects out of the resident now this boss may be your post graduate uh, teacher he may be your associate professor he may be in a private hospital head of a unit or head of a department so what anybody looks into is number one quality is the one the junior or the fellow who accepts his failures when i say he he who accepts his failure means he who looks inside and tries to find out how i would have dealt this patient better not that oh this man was very old sir this patient had lot many comorbid conditions sir the attendants were very fussy and uh, you know one who tries to blame outside factors 
for his failure. Then looking into within him, how could I have done this particular management better? Or how could I do it better next time? Hence, the first and the foremost quality is one who accepts his failure, is self-aware and who is willing to improve at all costs. That is the one quality a boss looks into. Second quality, a junior who gives tough feedbacks. I would love a guy who tells me, Sir, I think we would have done this case the another way. Sir, we could have, can we take him up early when I decide we do it him tomorrow morning? He, he, the guy who tells me that, sir, I think in patience and trust we take her up tonight. She might deteriorate till tomorrow morning. So it is, you know, a, a motivator. Jim Rose said, sincerity is not the test of truth. Truth is the test of truth. Somebody who is very sincere and just keeps silent, doesn't give me the feedback. I have a junior who knows everything. He's a bright young boy. He's in the hospital. I'm at home. And he's very sincere for the patient care. But somehow he does not express himself truthfully to me. He looks at me. What would I like at 2 a.m.? tonight that is not the kind of person which is appreciated by any chief of a service people look for a honest bold opinion maker well that has to be made respectfully but there should be one guy who can truthfully tell his boss look that is how we can improve that is how we can manage this case better that is how we can come out of this problem better and number three is people who trust you. People who trusted you when you were not popular. People who left their last job and joined you to start a new unit. Never knowing how much popularity, how much revenue you would achieve. Such people are also appreciated by all people who run the unit from the top. Now, what do we expect out? Another thing which any elderly guy or a unit head or boss would like is number one, the gentleman who brings problems with the solution sir this patient is not doing well he's not coming to you the boss and informing on phone or in his office look sir i don't know what to do bed number 24 is very sick that doesn't help the boss here here is a guy who says sir bed number 24 is not doing well i have sent following investigations i have called the neurology and cardiology to look at him so that by another two hours we will have his workup and two more opinions and then also suggests sir I think it is worth shifting this patient to HTU. Now this is the guy who has brought not only a problem he has also brought the solution. So this is the guy who would be appreciated, who humbly puts up the problem as well as the solution. Second character is who solves boss's problem. Now the boss has his own problems from his boss, from his late coming to the hospital for some reasons. We have had residents. I mean, me and uh, Dr. Arun Handa, we have been very uh, welcome Ashwin and uh, Dr. Rudra Prasad. We have been very loyalist uh, 
lecturer or juniors of uh, Professor C.M. Singh. And the day he was late, we always looked after the So we, as a loyalist, welcome Sudhanshu, we as a loyalist will look after not only the ward problems, we will also look after the problems of the chief. And there is nobody who will not appreciate such a good gesture. The third point is the rule of one challenge at one time. Let's say there is a patient who is posted for a given, say, right hemicolectomy. Now, you try to suggest that in this particular case, should we give a laparoscopic approach as the first priority for these blah 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 reasons. Now, You have your point, you have given your reason and logic and the boss decides, oh no, this case we will go open. Now, one challenge, challenge him once, don't challenge him again and again. Let us first assume that the boss, the junior consultant, the fellow, So in such circumstances, we should challenge a person once only. Well, having said that, these are three things, if I try to repeat, bring problems, the guy who brings problems with the solutions is always appreciated. The guy who solves boss's problem, everybody will appreciate and he puts one challenge at one time is always liked by all. Now, there are times when the boss reacts abnormally, which he should not. But this I told in one of the initial lecture also, suppose a resident has come late for rounds. The boss is already halfway through the rounds. You are late. With a pause, he says, you are always late. Now, all of us have been trained from our first standard till our MBBS internship that whenever you are asked a question you are supposed to reply back straight. While we were in class 1 the teacher asked what is CAT? We said CAT is CAT. When we came to final year they asked what are the major criteria of rheumatic fever. We answered 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Now here is the situation where we need to train ourselves. When you are told with a dialogue which is an objection to what you have done. I repeat, 
somebody says you have not made the discharge card this morning I told you yesterday to do it then with a pause the other guy again says you are a repeated offender you have not done it last week also well that is a negative way of the boss to react with the resident or the junior but the resident or the junior his communication he has to be soft and he is not supposed to reply back sir on Monday morning and Thursday I came in time so that is nobody will appreciate the best thing when you have an obvious error in management is to say that you are sorry you, you need to feel sorry now having worked with a very polished uh, boss Dr. Forrest Carey Eggleston whenever I did a mistake he always called me and said I said we, used, we were drilled like that and I would like all of you to use few things you know when there is a way when you say you want to say that you are sorry sorry is a very stereotype word which is not uh, appreciated because every day the whole whole day you will continue to say sorry then the one day the boss will say GD when will you stop saying sorry so even when you want to say sorry change the phrase each time skin sutures were left the spinal bore off so the old man on the table started moving his legs we were doing it in D theater in CMC and D theater had a glass window between boss's office and D theater while this patient was moving his legs boss it is your body language that the other guy should feel that you are really, really feeling apologistic and let me tell you he once I apologized to him he never reminded me during my next three years of stay that I am the joker who without giving local you know sutured a old man so he would really forgive and for that matter any elderly guy has done his mistakes in his residency in his career if it appeals that the apology is sincere the gentleman would always forget about the issue so that is what most people would do most people will react to a situation but at the same time a bit of suggestion to my elderly friends to get concerned for our juniors now this is what I said how the junior should react to his boss now next few minutes I am going to say how can a boss react positively to his juniors thereby imbibing more confidence of the team and welcome uh, Professor Gopalan so the boss can also have a way let me say a boy a resident who has come not prepared for the last two three times I give him a homework and then again he comes up blank then there are two ways of saying a regular guy would say if you do not study you will fail there is no uncle in DNB exam who will say he is a very good boy with this kind of performance you are bound to fail now this professor has said failed twice even in first year the boy joined six months ago but the boss has failed me him you know in one morning Monday morning he has failed him twice in five minutes when his exams are two and a half years ago later 
So it is worthwhile for the boss to call him over a cup of coffee and ask him, Sonny, what are your issues? And I would start it like this. Dear Rahul, I want you to be better than me one day. Even this morning, I told all of them that believe me, all people who have risen in life, I am not a great achiever. I am, I am not a great player. But whatever I am, I try to motivate and I said, look, there are two qualities all good people have. One of them is punctuality. Second thing is they read and upgrade themselves sincerely on day to day basis. When you start with a positive note, I mean, it's worth asking, can I help you in any way that you can concentrate more on his books? I found a resident who was not coming for the classes had her ligament sprained. There is a gentleman, a girl or a boy who has joined the residency program either through merit or through a paid quota seat has intentions to learn. That is why he is with us. If for some reason he is not responding well, it is the duty of the chief to look after him and look after him with a positive note. Sonny, what can I do better for you? The guy says, I, I don't have retention. I don't feel like. I feel like sleepy every time. When I analyze, the gentleman lies down in bed and keeps the book on his tummy. And then anybody in that situation will sleep in 15 minutes. Right? So we set target for them. We should look into their family problems. I mean, one boy who was not academically doing well, when I took him across and asked him, Sonny, what are your issues? I was touched. He had lost his father a month ago. Now, in such situation, anybody will be an emotional wreck and he had a financial responsibility towards his family. And the father left some debt for him to be paid. Now, until we concern ourselves, we always try, majority of us, when a resident doesn't do well, we only point our finger and say, you will fail. And then after a pause, we say, you will surely fail. Do we tell the same thing to our own son or daughter? No. We try to pamper them. Now, if we want to develop a great team, our conduct should be fatherly for one and all. Welcome Dr. Bansal. Dr. Bansal is a senior consultant in our hospital and very academic uh, person. Contributes a lot to resident teaching program. So until we become like a fatherly figure to such people who are down, my policy is to start with the weakest link first, the guy who does not do well in his academics, I will hold him by hand and try to push him upwards. The people who are self-driven will continue to do better. Now, when you talk sweet, when you take the crowd along with, look into the other man's interest. If I have a number two guy who is working for me, I should sit with him. I will ask him what are his personal problems. How can I help him? I should see that every, every three months he does something better. Until I take care of him in respectability, in his mental, technical, and 
financial upward movement. Tilly grows with me. How do I expect the unit to grow? It is always a two-way philosophy. The boss has to act as a fatherly figure, has to try to develop the department with all courteousness. Until in today's situation, until we do not look after the other people, remember respect is the only thing. Good words, a nice dialogue conveyed to everybody. Always appreciate the formula is appreciate in public and criticize in private. Suppose there is a technical mishap. The first thing I would ask after the patient has been bailed out, the first thing is I keep my hand on the shoulder of my younger friend and I ask, how are you? Are you okay? Don't be upset. I would always say there are more people dead in the grave because of me than anybody in the department. Why? Number one, I have done more number of cases. Number two, I have done more complex cases which would have died anyway with a higher percentile elsewhere in any other surgical center. One should lead by example. There is, it always gives, if somebody's anastomosis leaks, if the senior guy says, oh, I never had a leak, that means either the guy has not done enough anastomosis and or he's telling a lie or his patients do not come for follow up to him back. So friends, helping your youngsters when they are in problem, not only technically, it also matters how much you help them emotionally. Stand like a solid rock with them. That is how the other guy would reciprocate. Though it is not always true. Sometime you do a lot for your younger friends. I have had residents for whom is a true happening. I have had residents for whom I have struggled two, three years with them every Sunday afternoon, every Sunday afternoon. But because I was tough on discipline and certain issues, once they passed out, they never showed me my face. Now the important thing is, should I leave my emotional control to such characters? Should I stop teaching? Because two, three of the jokers were not respectful. No, never allow your emotions. Suppose in your lifetime, one, two, three people backstab you. Doesn't matter. Majority will not backstab. Probably their purpose, their issues of getting benefit from you are over. And hence, they don't think that I can be of any use to them and they turn their back. Fair enough. But never be emotional while you interact with your team. Always try to be affectionate. You live your culture. There is a famous saying that a cow yields sweet milk after taking bitter leaves and grass and a snake will always yield venom even if you feed him with milk. The issue is only on one's nature. So let us not let our nature be controlled by a lot of other people who are trying to sabotage us. This I said so in one of my lectures say three weeks ago 
that let the self-sabotage not control us. Let us be affectionate as seniors. And similarly, for youngsters, even your purpose of passing the exam is over. You can always in cash upon your boss for your next job, for your better placement, for your fellowship somewhere, because this is the guy who is well connected everywhere else. So never spoil your relationship with your last boss or your last employer, whichever place you leave, if you have to, for betterment, you must leave with a soft touch and taste. There should be no bitterness. Try to express in a polite way that these are the reasons I have a better future ahead and I would not like to discontinue and leave it with a in surgical learning. We should not be governed by the law of the institution. The law of the institution might say it you can give one month notice. But think about that old man who has trained you. Does he have a substitute? If he doesn't have a substitute, the institution may say one month notice. He would appreciate if you hang around and give him two months notice so that he has somebody to take care of. And ideally, one needs to inform much earlier because you may be in a pivotal position where the replacement may not be available on the shelf. So, dear friends, to conclude this evening's lecture, I would say from the prospects of the boss, from his side, a good boss is one who creates a good team. And the best boss is one who creates a team which continues to work even when boss is not there. Either he has retired or he has expired. So people remember that look at this his Dr. X's unit, how good his students are doing. They are remembered. Dr. Eggleston is alive today. 98 residents he trained single handed and each one is doing reasonably well. All of us remember him because of his contribution in our mental making. Each one of us can propagate that fire of knowledge, compassion and caring within our residents, within our fellows and our consultants to develop a team. From the resident viewpoint, I have suggested that if you want to rise up, please go to the boss with the solution, not only the problem. Bring the problem, suggest the solution. Solve the problems of the boss, which is pre-existing problems. Give him one challenge at one time. And the boss appreciates people who have accept their failures, share with him, call him when he is needed, and give him a tough feedback. And People who trust in him and are willing to work for him. Politeness is symbol, important character. All, if you analyze around, all people around you who are doing well were compassionate and talk sweetly and listen to their team and carry the team like family members. They do not disown a, a lazy boy. They, they try to motivate him. They do not stop, you know, suddenly say, okay, you are a useless character, get lost, find a better job. They try to tailor the same boy into a better boy, into an obedient boy and convert the real mentor or a boss is one who converts a non-performer into a performer, a rude, crude guy into a soft-spoken guy. A unconcerned for poor and apathetic into a gentleman who is concerned for poor, downtrodden and sick. You see, a surgical boss is a motivator. He should leave an impact on his residents which should last for their lifetime. And they further should propagate the same culture 
of sharing and caring with people to come. Few words about our relationship with paramedics. You see, they form an important aspect of our surgical performance. We need to give them respect, communicate nicely. You know, one important issue is welcome Dr. Surinder Sharma. The end important aspect is when we communicate with them. While you walk across the corridor, say, hi, sister, how are you doing? You look good. That's all. You don't need to compliment. If you want to compliment a nurse, the best word to use is, oh, you are looking good today. That's all. You should not be using the word, or oh, you are looking beautiful. You are looking very this and that. You know, you need to, you need to be close to them and still maintain a large social difference. My suggestion to some of the youngsters, the resident level, that at times some of the paramedics might try to be extra pleasant to you and a lot of people get trapped in this game as it what they call these days, the current generation call this TP. That stands for time pass. Now time pass has become a permanent uh, spouse for the rest of their life. Uh, welcome Dr. Shakti. So you need to be careful if it is by choice, good enough, but it should not be an accident. So be respectful. These are the people who hold retracted for you for hours together. When you are there in theater, they look after your post-operative patients and you are, they can spread a good word about you and they can also ruin your character because this is the group which stays maximum time with the patient population and once in a while even if you have a social sense of humor crack it in a group not in a private never communicate one to one with paramedics if you want to talk something talk in crowd that is always taken as positive but uh, giving them respect once in a while a uh, find an occasion somebody has got well a sick patient from the ventilator has got well somebody a dying hemoperitoneum survived try to share some sweets some social so that they are recognized i mean there's no love lost in saying sisters it's because of you this patient is surviving everybody knows it is combined effort but when you are at the helm of affairs it is worth sharing the credit with others that is your magnanimity one doesn't become small that saying that what did she do that is her job they i had a person with me when i was trying to convince him that after each surgery please thank the scrub nurse he said they are paid for it what for you you keep saying thank you thank you eight times a day well i said you can live your way but i gradually got him across the table and the time he spent with me a year and a half when he left he was talking the same sweet way you see one needs to improvise methodology give respect and bring the guy motivated along the right path that is the role of a mentor that is what we will be remembered in times to come if we are crude, if we are rude, even the usual example which I give people is the maximum hard work, midnight jobs we do to generate some funds for our family. And if we are crude, even my own son would not get me a glass of water. If I talk rough to him and say, give me water, then all what he will say that is a glass and there is a fridge please get up and take yourself so when your own son remember this all of the elderly guys on this platform if our own son for whom we do so much does not tolerate our rude character tell me why a resident who will come to me for three months in a year 
with toilet my nonsense you can get the best out of people by gentle polite words and get the job done so dear friends uh, thank you very much for being with me on a sunday evening and i'm sure uh, your inputs will make uh, this program better and we meet uh, next week same time and i will put up some topic which involves all of you to share and grow thank you very much